Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moix from Big Mountain Studio, and today we're going to talk about threading and closures. And I'm going to help describe what those are and how to use them to improve the performance of your application. So the way I'm going to do that is I have an application right now that's already built, very simple, but there's a problem. And let me show you what that is. When I start the application, it took about three seconds for anything to come up. And that's a problem. When you have an application, you want it to show the user something right away when they start it. Otherwise, they're gonna think that there's something wrong with it. They think that your application is, is hung and it's performing badly and they're just going to probably uninstall it. So what's the problem? It's actually this line of code right here. When the application starts up, I get the data from an external source and I put it in this variable right here. And basically this kind of simulates, like if you're getting data from a database or somewhere on the web, or you have a you know Firebase backend. So it's getting data somewhere and it's taking time. In this case, if we go in here, it's I'm adding two seconds to it and that's why it's taking so long. So I'm kind of simulating that it's taking a long time, but really all the data is local. And you'll see if we comment that out and we run the application, you'll see how much faster it loads before we see something. You see that? So the label appeared right away and you can see the table view. The table view appeared right away too. Okay, so how long is this taking? Well, let's put a timer on it so we can see a before and after time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a variable here. I'll just say start equals date. And then when this is finished, I'll say end equals date. And then we'll just print out to the console here the elapsed time. And uh, so we'll just say end dot, there's its interval. Uh, no, not this one. Oh yeah, this one right here, the first one. Yeah, time interval since your start date. And so that will give you the difference between the, the end date and the start date and show us how much time elapsed. Okay, good, so let's take a look here. So it's taking two seconds, 2.1 seconds. Okay, so good to know. So let's try to speed that up. And the way I'm going to speed that up first is by using threads. So what is a thread? So basically thread is short for thread of execution. And it's basically something that's being executed on the processor. And there could be a lot of different things that are being processed on the processor. So basically right now, when this application is running, it's running on one thread. And this, this application is running on the, the main thread, what's called the main UI thread. Anything that's rendered or that you're interacting with on this screen is executing on the processor on one thread. Well, an application can run on many different threads because we always want to keep the main UI thread active or interactive so you can like touch it and do things and interact with it. But we couldn't do that because this was taking so long. So what we want to do is put this on another thread. So your application can run on many different threads at one time to free up the, the main UI thread to always keep that you know, responsive. So our main UI thread wasn't responsive because of this line. So now that means we need to take this line and put it on a different thread. So the way you do that is you want to use this object called dispatch queue. And we need to instantiate this by using this constructor right here, or this function right here. So we're using global and what is this parameter that it's asking for? Well, this is a quality of service parameter. That's what QoS stands for. And basically think of that as priority. And you can give your threads different priorities because maybe, maybe when your application starts, you put some code on a different thread that you don't care when it returns. It could return in 10 minutes or one hour. You don't care. Maybe it's going out to check to see if the user has the latest version and just to give them a notification say hey there's a newer version out there why don't you update your app you don't care when that returns it's not important it's not a priority 
So that would be the lowest priority. And that would actually be this priority right here. Here, let me show you the rest of them. Background right here. That's the lowest priority. The highest priority would be user interactive. That's the one where the user is interacting with your UI and you need a data right away. And that's the one we're going to use because we don't want the user waiting forever for data to appear in the tail view because there's nothing he can do with your app until that data comes up. So that's the, that's the quickest one. That's the highest priority. And then the second highest priority is user initiated where maybe you can wait a few seconds and then utility you can wait a few seconds to a few minutes and then background is the slowest okay so let's keep it at user interactive as the highest priority so now this is, gives me my dispatch queue object that I can use to manage threads and once we have that we can use this function async to execute some code and async basically means it's short for asynchronous which means uh, things can happen at the same time as opposed to synchronous which means step one has to you know step one of something has to happen first and then when that's finished step two can happen asynchronous would be many things can happen at the same time okay so let's move our code into there there you go so now this code is actually going to be executed on a background thread it needs self in there Okay, so now that's going to be executed on a background thread, but let's see what happens here if we run it. Nothing happens. But you did notice that the UI was more responsive. It came up much faster, right? Let's check out what the response time was on that. If we go to, uh, take a look here. Oh, look at that. Remember before it was like 2.1 second or something like that? 2.01 seconds. Now it's, it's, it's like super fast. It's almost instantaneous. Okay, good, so we know that works, but how come we didn't see any data? Well, the reason why is because when the code gets executed, it comes into view did load, it executes this line, executes this line, it starts this line, but it's gonna keep continuing because this code is happening on a different thread now. So your main UI thread keeps going. It says, oh, thread two, here, you can run this, and I'm gonna continue on with thread one, which is the main, the main UI thread. And so basically, this is this is what's happening. This is the order, and, and we can test this with just uh, some print statements here. Like, oh, let's just say this is uh, step one. And then what's going to happen is it's going to come through here, and this will occur. This will be step two, and then this code will get run, and it will finish with step three three and then later this will finally finish and this will be the fourth step so that will be the order in which it executes and we can just test it by just by running real quick and taking a look at the output log okay let's take a look it should be done by now yeah there you go step one step two shows elapsed time step three is at the end of view did load and then step four happens when our background thread finally completed with the get data. So after we get data, our view is already loaded and then we get the data. So the table never gets refreshed. We never reload the data in the table view. So let's do that. Here, let me clean this up a little bit here, get these out of the way. Okay, so we're just going to go into our table view and reload the data now that we have data coming back. So what is happening? How come we're still not seeing the data? Well, remember earlier? I t <laughs> okay, it, it did show, but that's not normal. <laughs> sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't. And a lot of times it won't work. And I'm going to uh, tell you why. Is The reason why sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't work, and sometimes it'll give you an error too, is because when we reload the data, we're not actually guaranteeing that this is happening on the main thread see because we're still on a background thread right and remember I was telling you that everything that happens on the UI has to happen on the main thread I want to just see something here see if it gave us a warning yeah yeah take a look at this okay this is this is exactly kind of like what I was talking about it says the application is modifying the auto layout engine meaning it's, it's putting inf information on the uh, on the UI from a background thread 
after the engine was accessed from the main thread. This can lead to engine corruption and weird crashes. <laughs> and this is why, this is, sometimes, I've done this before, uh, and sometimes it won't even work. Like, let, let's just run it again, just for the heck of it. Okay, see that? It, so this time, it didn't work. And that might have been one of those weird crashes that happened. <laughs> oh, it, well, okay. It did work again, but it took a really long time, right? That was way more than two seconds. So how do we fix that? We basically just have to go back to the main thread. And you can just do that right in here. So let's go back to the main queue. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, dispatch queue. And we want the main dispatch queue right here. And this will give us, and main is basically, this is your UI thread. And from here, we're just going to do like we did with the background thread and execute some code asynchronously. All right, there we go. Now this should work. What I mean is it should work faster and not give us a warning in our output. Because <laughs> it did work before, but I'm telling you, that's not, that's not usually normal. Okay, good. So everything popped up. It was fast. Yeah, our label came up, our table came up. Everything's perfect. So this is a common pattern right here that you guys will most likely come across when you see code online or even in your own applications, you're going to be uh, using this a lot. And so how can you remember this next time? Because you might not be using this all the time, but you're going to have to remember to come back and use this. Okay, well, one of the things that you can do is you just create a code snippet out of it. So I'm just going to come here. I'm going to drag this code. Uh, let me stop it first. Okay, and I'm going to drag this code and put it in my code snippet library. And I'll call this background thread and we could just say code to execute on background thread and then on main UI thread it'd be nice if we could see the rest of that huh <laughs> I don't even know how to leave, even go over there and see the rest of what I just typed okay completion shortcut Th this is what you can type in to get that code to come back up and we'll just say BGT, background thread. All right, you know what? Maybe background would be easier for you to remember. Okay, completion scopes. You only want it to happen inside of a function or a method, so that's fine. Let's edit this code because you don't want this part right here, right? All right, let's go back here. Let's edit this, and we'll just say main UI thread and the code that's in here is your background thread. All right, cool. So now that you have that, whenever you need it, you can just say background, and there it is, background thread. Hit enter, and then you just type in what you need. Okay, good. So there you go. That's uh, information on background threads and how it works. And for the next part, I'm going to show you how we can implement a closure because what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this a step further. I'd actually want to go into my get data and put the threading in here instead and use a completion handler. So the completion handler will tell me when everything here is done and I will know when it's done when I come back here and then reload the table data. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something new about threads and background threads and the main thread. And consider sharing it with your friends on your social media. And consider subscribing if you want to be notified when the next video comes out when I talk about closures.